Y'all, what a pretty morning it is. Check it out. Got a gorgeous slight north wind. The bay is gorgeous. Sunrise, pretty. And our bait is nice and healthy. These are my fiddler crabs. I only have a few. This is typically how I like to keep them in some sand in a little bit bigger container. Give them some water every now and then. And I like stuff that they can crawl under and be and feel protected. But these are all our fiddler crabs. I'm about to put them in one of these. These are actually for crickets and they work extremely well to keep filler crabs. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm happy that y'all can join me this morning. Mom is getting ready as well. She's gonna come fishing with me and we're gonna go try to catch our dinner, y'all. So we'll see you when the boat's launched out on the water. See if I can pick up some more bait. I'm gonna try to find some fiddlers. And usually you can walk along saltwater marshes and banks, find stuff like this. So that one ain't gonna move, but like under here, a lot of times you can find fiddler crabs. Oh, see, there's a couple there. There's a fiddler. He ain't very big. But I'm gonna keep this one. The other one was real tiny, but that's how you can find them, just under stuff like this. The other one was real small, so I don't want him. Oh, there's a good one. That's a good mud crab right there. Check that out. Heck yeah. Catching your own bait is very satisfying. It's pretty easy to do as well if you don't mind getting a little dirty. So I'm gonna do that and try to find some more. We just showed up to our fishing spot. Mom's already uh, got a line out. So hopefully she can get the first one. Let's get us a fiddler crab and start fishing along the seawall. You can purchase these or you can catch your own under pieces of like driftwood, rocks and stuff. But I like to hook them going through the bottom, come out the top and we're ready to go. Make a cast. And this is just gonna sit on the bottom that filler crab's gonna float up a little bit and look nice and attractive for a hungry fish down there. <laughs> All right, let's try a filler crab over here. Oh, I have a fish. Mmm. Finally. Uh oh. Finally caught one. Yeah. Ah. No fish on the boat. Too bad he's got a. It's November, but that is gorgeous little fish. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. What do you eat? A shrimp? Yes, you do. So we are in November at the time of making this video, and flounder are closed the entire month of November. That would be a nice oh, keeper. Good job. <laughs> that would be a nice keeper, but like I said, in Alabama, the entire month of November, they have to go back no matter what sizes. So gorgeous fish. Good eating. You pretty little fish. Good job. Thank you. Okay, bye. We'll see you we'll come. later. Boom. Every time I've grabbed the net, we've lost Ooh. fish. This is a nice one. Keep it tight. <laughs> All right. There we oh. go. Good job. We've missed like four of them. Heck yeah. Check that out. Mom caught a really pretty sheep set. They only have to be 12 inches, and that's a great specimen of one. <laughs> yeah, check out them teeth on them. Hello. Oh, things are goofy. And I'm going to be throwing a drop shot set up with the filler crab and I'll mix it up with the live shrimp. This is a one ounce bank sinker. Come up about a foot to a size one Mustad O'Shaughnessy live bait hook. I've hooked a filler crab on there. Come up another foot to a black barrel swivel. And this is 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Throwing this on a 3000 size Daiwa reel, 20 pound braid and a seven and a half foot medium heavy power fast action spinning rod. I know that boat's for sale, eight point. Oh, you got one? Got him. There you go, fight him, fight him. <laughs> Mom is on it today. She's beating me. It's a sheepy. Yeah, yeah, it's a sheepy, yeah. just gotta get him up. Oh. And he's in the net. Wow, back to back sheep said, dang. Oh, Mom with another stud sheep said, check that out. Heck yeah, these are gonna go great cooked up at home. They're so fun to catch, very good eating. So he's gonna go in the cooler. <laughs> You're allowed 10 of them a person here in the state of Alabama. <laughs> Y'all, and there is a work of art that is 92 foot biking. It's actually for sale if I'm making this video. That's an awesome sport fish. All right, let's see if I can get one here. I've lost three so far. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's another nice one. Ooh, good Thank <laughs> yeah, you. no Make problem. You not have to worry about it. Dang. I was holding my rod in my, I thought I had one, but I was hooked into your line. 
Oh wow, that one's that one's got one He's too. Scary. I don't know if I'm gonna kiss <laughs> that this one's fish. A crazy looking one. I don't think I'm gonna kiss this fish. <laughs> That's a He's, good specimen is that of a, a sheep tooth. Up there? Yeah, he just has one tooth oh, up there. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, well, <laughs> good job. Throw them in the cooler. We have dinner. All right, so mom has three sheep's head. I have none on deck. I have hooked and seen three. You have it? Oh yeah, it's a fish. If we can get it in, that'll be your fourth one. Oh yeah, sheep's head. There you go. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cute little one. Yo, there's another nice sheep's head. Check that out one out. That is awesome. Yeah, you're I'll beat me today. Yeah. Don't get bit. <laughs> as soon as you dropped it down. Oh man, there you go. <gasps> we got him. <laughs> thank you. Heck yeah. Wow. Mom got another one. Mom with the fifth sheep's head of hers for the day. That's a nice one. About good average size. So we'll have plenty of meat. Heck yeah, good job. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all, we have made it off the water. Mom absolutely annihilated the fishing today. I just lost a bunch of fish, but sometimes it's just like this. So we have some sheep's head to clean. They're very delectable meat, white, flaky, sweet like crustaceans, like crabs or lobster, because their diet consists of all crustaceans. They eat barnacles, oysters, crabs, shrimp. They love crustaceans and in turn, makes their meat taste very nice and wanted. So I do have a brand new seven inch sword flex fillet. If you had to get one fillet knife, I like a seven inch with a little bit of flex, but not super flexible. That's why I like these. We're gonna take this old convict fish here. See if I can show you their teeth. Look at those teeth. Ain't that crazy? That's how they munch down on everything. So let's start cleaning it. Most of their meat is right here. Goes around the rib cage and then straight back down. Right behind the pectoral, come down, get the scales off your knife because you won't be able to cut through anything if you have scales on the blade. And then open that sheep's head up with a shallow cut through the back of the dorsal. Use that flexible knife, flay it off their thick bones. You don't have to worry about cutting to the other side. There's some very thick bones. See the middle of their spine, you want to go up and then over and back down on them so you don't miss the other side of meat. Cut it off, fillet around that really large rib cage. So I pull up and just use the knife to separate the meat from the bone. Like that, see how big their rib cage is? Boom, what a pretty piece of sheep's head. Cut it off. Now we have a filet. See, there's no missed meat. There is a bunch in between the ribs, which you can use to make some stock and stuff, but their head's extremely bony. We need to separate the skin from the filet because we're gonna blacken this on both sides. Now, if you just wanna do sheep's head on the half shell, just like you would a redfish, you can leave the skin and scales on. But we need to separate this. Take the knife at an angle. And cut it right off their skin. See that? Really nice sheep's head filet. No wasted meat. You can see one about this size. This is what you get from it because their rib cage is really big. Boom. And there's a ready to go sheep's head filet. We'll take it up, clean it up, and blacken it for our angel hair pasta and creamy sauce. Are you gonna come and cook with us? Huh? What about you, Bobo? Huh? Are you coming and cooking with us? What's up, Buckaroo? Oh, okay, camera shy. Not camera shy. <laughs> All right, y'all, so we are outside. And it is a gorgeous day out here in Orange Beach, Alabama. How beautiful. So I do have my flat top grill. This is a 28 inch Blackstone. You've seen me cook on it before. I absolutely love cooking outside, especially fresh fish. So we need to get this thing cranked up and going. Get this propane turned on. 
There we go. And I just need one side on. Ooh, got it going. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Scared the dog though, didn't it? <laughs> All right. We want it on about medium heat. We're going to blacken our fish fillets and put it on top of some pasta that we're cooking inside with a nice, delicious cream sauce. So let's get this warmed up and it shouldn't take long to get cooking. Let's go. Y'all, this blackstone is getting hot, so it's time to blacken our fish. Have our sheep's head cut in a nice, manageable fillets, melted butter, Chef Paul's black and red fish magic. This is going to be delicious. What you want to do, dip this in your unsalted butter. And then in the blackening seasoning. Oh man, when you blacken fish, it's literally what's in the name. It's blackened with all this delicious seasoning. Cajun flavor is going to be so good with this white fish. And let's lay it down. Oh yeah, it's ready to go. You gotta work quick. It's a lot of high heat and good seasoning. That's where these thinner fillets come in nice and handy. And get the seasoning all up in there. So it's a little bit different than just lightly grilling it. This is truly blackened fish. Whoo, it smells so good. Last one. And I like using the unsalted butter and the Chef Paws because there's not a lot of sodium in it. It's not too salty. A little bit healthier, per se. It's still butter. <laughs> but get all that nice blackened seasoning on there. And if you have your favorite seasoning that you like to use, use that instead. But I like the Chef Paws for that reason. It tastes good and it's not a lot of sodium. It doesn't take long, a few minutes on each side. So here in just a bit, we'll flip it. Ooh, that looks good. Heck yeah, it does. Smells even better. I want to base some more of this butter on there. Like I said, it's unsalted butter. Oh, popping. But dang, that's going to be delicious. It'll be a nice contrast between the seasoned fish and that cream sauce we're going to make. Hey everyone, it's time to flip it. Let's go. Oh man, that looks so good. That's what you want. They don't call it blackening season for nothing. Oh, missed that one. Boom. We're gonna let that cook. I'd say that was about three to five minutes. And so we'll do another three to five minutes. These are thinner fillets and they're gonna cook up nice, flaky and just absorb all that flavor. And then we'll start making the rest of part of our dish. Y'all, our fish is cooked. Let's pull it up, put it on the plate, and then we'll go into the final part of our dish. See that? Perfect. Ooh, those are pretty fillets, I'll tell you that. All right, those are good. Let's, uh, I'm gonna clean this off a little bit, and then we're gonna cook our cream sauce out here as well. So let's go cover these up and get ready. Hey, so we've done our fish. It's time to make our delicious cream sauce. It may seem complicated. It's really not. It's very simple. We're cooking outside again, cast iron on cast iron. There's a lot of different kinds out there. You can do corn and black beans, or in this case, and we're going to do garlic and bell peppers. But I did have an awesome viewer, I think this was last year, send an oven mitt to the P.O. box, which will be linked down below if you want to send something. Might be featured on the channel or get some fan mail. It's pretty cool. But I have this shark mitt. So I don't burn my hand. But we have two tablespoons of unsalted butter. So we're gonna let this butter simmer down and melt. Now you don't wanna burn anything, especially when doing like garlic and butter and cream. So we're, we got it about medium heat. Our butter's melting, it's time to add. This is half of a bell pepper chopped. Like I said, you can do black beans, you can do corn, green bell peppers, whatever you like but this red bell pepper gives it some good color and it tastes good too, it smells really good. So we want this bell pepper to kind of break down a little bit and then we'll add our garlic. If you add your garlic first, it's gonna burn and everyone knows burnt garlic is not that good. Or it doesn't take too long. And I know I do a lot of simple dishes where when you get home, you wanna hurry up, cook that fish, eat, and then take a shower or vice versa. This is something that we've waited the next day to come cook so we can enjoy a beautiful day out here and a nice gourmet lunch, fresh from the water, harvesting our own fish. You also, just to thicken it up just a little bit, we're gonna add some white lily flour. You know, we're not making a gravy, we're making a sauce. 
but adding a little bit of that flour, it's gonna thicken it up just a hair and absorb some of that butter, allow things to stick. Stir that, see how everything's turning brown now? It's not burning, it's time to add our garlic. It's all personal preference, I don't want real crunchy, so I'll let the bell peppers cook down some. Here's our garlic. It's like one clove of garlic finely chopped. Add that in there. Let that garlic cook down for about a minute and a half to two minutes. Not much more because then it burns and it won't taste that well. Now I want to add some more Cajun flair to this sauce. I have Chef Paul's Seafood Magic. Once again, it's not very salty, so it allows you to add salt to taste. And that's a big thing with me. I don't like making things too salty. There's a lot of Cajun seasonings out there. And if you just compound it, you're gonna be tasting nothing but sodium. Here goes a dash of Chef Paul's Seafood Magic. Boom. Stir that in and we'll start adding our cream. This is heavy whipping cream. And we're just gonna slowly pour it in and stir. Continue pouring in and stir. You don't want it too thin. You want it to be a cream. See how it cooled down the heat some? So we're gonna let this stir in and cook up and thicken. We're adding, there's no cheese in this, but it's gonna taste like you had the best Gouda creamy cheese ever this way. Okay. We're gonna just continuously stir. You don't wanna stop stirring. So this is cooking up and thickening. See how it's getting thick? Now I just wanna taste it real quick before we're done just to make sure it doesn't need anything else. Now this, is, now this sucker's super hot, so. All right, here we go, let's give it a try. Mm. We're gonna add a little bit more Cajun seasoning. Man, the flavors are great. That bell pepper really does it. We'll stir this in and then it will be finished. Woo, that is good. It smells amazing. Like we're at a gourmet Creole or Cajun restaurant up on the causeway or in New Orleans except we're here in South Alabama. <laughs> hey, so this is finished. It's thickened up good. We've gave it a test and it is time to take it off the heat, set it on the stove, and all we gotta do is cook our noodles now. Woo, that's so good, it smells great. Cannot wait to pour that over our blackened fish. Dang. Let me kill the heat out here and I'll see you inside. Hey, I have two servings of angel hair pasta. You can use whatever you like. Fettuccine noodles work good. We have our water boiling. I've added a teaspoon of salt. And it's time to add in our angel hair pasta. Hoo hoo hoo, it's gonna be good. All right, now we're gonna let this cook down two to four minutes at a boil once it comes back to a boil. Cause I like mine a little al dente. And you don't wanna break your pasta either. Cause it's gonna shrink and be good, twirled up on a plate. But two to four minutes of this pasta cooking and then we'll drain it. That's gonna be good. I'm excited. Our pasta's finished, let's kill heat. I like it al dente, which means not super soft, a little firm, but it's cooked. And I think that's the best way. Let's go ahead and start draining it. We're gonna drain our pasta. You wanna be real careful, because it is boiling water. Oh, I love angel hair. Man, there we go. Here's our pasta. We're letting it drain. Get some of that water out. We're in Alabama, I've coated my bowl with some oil. Now, nah, I have got some extra virgin olive oil, I've coated that so the pasta doesn't stick. We have drained it, now it's time to put it in our bowl. And I'm gonna put a little bit more EVOO on there. Just a drizzle, you don't want too much. Boom. And that just prevents it from sticking. Now it's time to get all our ingredients together and plate our food. Look at this meal ready to go together. Oh my goodness. Fresh sheep's head from our Alabama state waters. Delicious. We know exactly what it is. Nice angel hair pasta and our homemade cream sauce. See how it rested a little bit, thickened up and browned? That's ready to go. Take a nice bed of pasta because we have a big fish filet. Take our piece of blackened fish. Lay it on there, boom. And now our cream sauce, oh man, that looks so good. 
That's <laughs> such a great contrast between the heavily seasoned fish and then this creaminess of this sauce. Look at that, that's ready to go. Awesome plates of food, check that out. Lastly, just for presentation purposes, you don't have to. I like some dry parsley flakes. It adds a little green to all this cream. And that's what a lot of restaurants do too. That's what you see. Just for presentation. Boom. <laughs> now it's time to go outside in the beautiful weather and eat our fresh fish. We gotta grab a couple forks and we'll see you out there. Hey, y'all come follow us down to the water's edge. Hey, I have mom with me since she caught most of those sheep's head or I guess all of them on this trip. <laughs> but, um, we have a nice plate of food that we get to share. It is great weather out here, South Alabama. It's like early winter time and we're in shorts and t-shirt for now. It's getting cold here in a bit, but I don't think there's any better way to enjoy eating fresh catch out here where it came from. So thank you, Lord, for putting this fish there. Go ahead, give it a try. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, it looks delicious. Got that cream Ooh. sauce on there. How is it? Is it good? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna have to try a bite now. Mm -hmm. Something about mm -hmm. just blackened fish with pasta and that cream sauce. I say it, I can't say it enough. It's like there's cheese in it and there's no cheese, but it's nice, thick, and creamy. Just like we're at an awesome restaurant where we paid a crap ton for a plate of food, but instead we got the boat and go out there and bait, but the trip is priceless. <laughs> That's better than a restaurant, y'all. That is I mean, so good. I don't think I've had a plate of food this uh, good in a while. This, uh, this fish has never been frozen. It was swimming just 24 hours ago, right out here in this beautiful Alabama state waters. And I'm glad that you can join us from my boat to the clean table and then the kitchen now eating with us. This is awesome experience being able to share with all of y'all. I'm gonna have to take another bite and then we'll have to let you go so we can finish our food. Mm. <laughs> is that not the best? Mm -hmm. I could eat this every day just like this. Mm. That is delicious. I mean, absolutely amazing. I hate to let you go. This is my least favorite part because I know y'all wanna stay and enjoy some. Here, if you wanna try a bite, I'll let you try a bite. <laughs> but until then, until they invent something where you can, you can make this yourself with any white flaky firm fish. Sheep's head's great because they're prevalent this time of year. Redfish is good. Anything blackened like this is amazing on some pasta with a cream sauce. If you enjoyed this video and you notice you have not subscribed to the channel yet, go smash that subscribe button. Y'all, as always, I love to hear from you, the good, the bad, and the ugly comments. So go leave a comment and a like down. No ugly comments. Hmm? No, ugly. <laughs> no ugly comments. Hey, I like to hear from everybody. So it's just fishing, it's having fun, it's a good time. All of our partners are linked down below, just like always in the description. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. And most importantly, I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later. Gotta take another bite, it's amazing. <laughs> Here we go. Mm. Mm-hmm.